Good evening, and welcome to Something to Talk About. We are at King's Restaurant in Timuning, and so happy again to be here. The hospitality of uh, King's and all of its staff is unmatched, and we're happy this evening to be showing off a, a new crime analyst for the Guam Police Department, uh, Prisciliano Ruiz is with us this evening as our guest. He's got a really impressive intelligence background from the Philippines, and he's here to try to crack some of our crimes. We'll find out all about him. We're something to talk about. Good evening, and welcome to Something to Talk About. This evening, we are in the, the company of uh, Mr. Prisciliano Ruiz, who's an um, Italian mafia. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, affectionately actually known as Pops, right? Yes, Pops. Is that around the police department you're known as Pops? Uh, yeah, they, oh, they okay. called me. They were the one who baptized me, Pops. Pops. Mm. Why, why? Is it because you're younger than everybody? Uh, no, it's that I, when I came first here, I... I was hired as a police officer trainee, so I went uh, training with these young guys. Mm -hmm. So they were the one who named me Pop. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that just means that you have, uh, you're everybody's father. Yeah, yeah and, okay. and great grandfather. And great, <laughs> well, that's nice, though. That's nice with, yeah. that, that, you, that your co workers can affectionately refer to you, right? Yes, yeah. So you've been with the Guam Police Department for four years four altogether, years. right? But you have experience um, with security, national security in the Philippines. Uh, that yeah. is where you're, that's where you got your education. I mean, that's not where you got, that's where you got your experience. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. T tell me, uh, tell me about that. It just seems that in the Philippines, uh, that yeah. it, 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 the Philippines is a nest for t terrorists and you know, p people who, uh, f for for factions and, and criminal activity and uh, that sort of thing. And you had a, you had training in national security there or uh, work there? Yes, ma'am, because I, I'm a retired uh, Philippine Navy officer. I've been in the Philippine Navy service for 34 years and seven months. And, and course, seven months. And seven months. <laughs> yeah, and, of right. course, the, the, the Philippine Navy is more involved mostly on uh, external defense, while us, our national police, mostly on internal defense. So if these police are, ca are not capable, especially during time of uh, elections, they need us to guard uh, elections, mm. election centers, because of hot spots where there might be trouble during elections. So. Is, what would you what would you compare that to in the United States? Would it be like a, maybe would it be like FBI? Would it be another what kind of CIA? Uh, in in the Philippine Navy, uh, I learned uh, analyzing things because uh, the career is uh, com compels you to go to different kind of positions like personnel officer, mm -hmm. intelligence officer, operations officer. A logistic officer, controller, uh, reservist and retiree affairs officer, and training and development officer. You have to go all to these positions before you reach the higher ranks of captain, commanders. You know, so and, and but, but most of your uh, most of your experience is in intelligence. Uh, or in a, a part security. of it now, five years, like that. yeah, yeah. So I've been involved not only in analyzing uh, the the movements of communist terrorists when I was assigned in the northern part of Luzon, but also analyzing also budget statistics or data because I've been a controller also. So They really used you a lot then. Yeah, because uh, analysis, analyzing things uh, make things uh, better in deciding because these are all based on data. Mm -hmm. So you cannot just make decisions without any kind of data. So you, you, might, not be you might be guessing, so it would be disadvantageous and risky for any kind of organization. So as an analyst, I mean, you're, you're a crime analyst. Yeah. You're a criminal analyst. Criminalist. So are, are you looking to analyze the crime itself or the criminal or both? Uh, by the title itself, crime analyst uh, pertains to analyzing crime. So actually crime involves, uh, according to Pat and Paul uh, Bartinghams, on their theory that uh, crime uh, involves the victim the offender, 
the place and the environment where the crime was committed. So you have mm -hmm. to study all of this. Study meaning to say you have to examine it, investigate, and look further and uh, look further to be able to answer different questions of why, how, what, where, where, and uh, these are actually, we call it in intelligence, as essential elements of information. So, right, right. Kind so, of like what well, like yeah. reporters do. Reporters. But you're, yeah, reporters do the same thing. Your, your information, though, leads to, to actually solving cases, which uh, is... I will be supporting police operation, whether in the tactical level. Tactical level means in the precinct, operational level, and strategic level at the headquarters or uh, operational mostly in the neighborhood uh, uh, precincts where there are where there are uh, lieutenants or captains that try to look at the bigger picture in a for example they did though and they will be the one to decide the deployment of uh, their police in a specific hot spots which i will be working on okay so, so T give me some examples of what Chief Rodalio or what detectives m might have been expecting from you when when you you came on as a crime analyst. What did they say that they wanted you to, you know, actually do to help them? What specifically? Uh, specifically, I have to work every day to look on the reports, to look for a series of crimes, uh, patterns, trends and other uh, kind of data that will uh, that we, that have that have a, that will impact the community I mean to say when it is recurring it becomes a problem when there's a pattern it becomes a problem mm -hmm. and now you have to identify who are the most affected by this problem in the community so i will be supplying them data by studying the patterns of how these cr crimes were committed time date place but the, the crimes that you're, so when, when you, you'll be called in to, to analyze every crime, I mean, or is it, that, is, are there, what, whatever is uh, a chronic crime, like, for example, copper wires, yeah. thefts. Now, you ha before, before I assume as uh, last Monday, I went already to, I went to scan the, the problem. Mm -hmm. The scanning means I have looked into the law enforcement records management system, the police reports, and I tallied it by month up to January to August, and I found out that two leading crimes that uh, came out of those police reports were theft of property and burglary. Okay. Then I will go di deeper by digging, going to specifics. Now, by knowing that theft of property and burglary are the two leading crimes, I have to open up again uh, the reports to identify the value, the value of those stolen uh, items. Mm -hmm. So if the copper wire uh, sums up to a bigger value compared to common, uh, common items as camera, uh, other kind of laptop, if this sums up to a bigger item, it will uh, give a greater cost on the government, so I will focus on that because it is a bigger crime and it, the cost is big. So that will help the police department know where they need to concentrate on. Yes. And, and so you mean the more valuable the crime, yeah. uh, the, the loss, the more valuable yeah. the loss, then the more the attention that the police department gives it. Yeah, for example, if there's a number of 1,364 uh, what do you call this? The the type of property combined with burglary and 84 items only for copper wires, but the cost is big compared to if you right. add up all. So you have to focus on the 84 copper wires stolen. So then uh, you 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 go further. You you have to open the case report. So you have to identify where it was hap where did where it happened, the time it happened, and you go further. The, uh, going beyond the statistic, mean you have to go like uh, who who might be needing this copper wire, who is creating demand for this copper wire, and right. who might be who might if it will not be shipped outside Guam, who will be using it? Mm. If it is not the junkyard who is buying it, who is using it? Is it a contractor using it in his trade, who is economizing? Then you go further, you go to the ports, identify the shipments. 
get the addresses who requested uh, for uh, for these container vans to be to be uh, to to be brought to their house so they can load all the items so you get the addresses and you pick out who are the suspicious this night not this might not be junkyards this might have a covered uh, busy establishment is not connected to junkyards but so, so you're saying total possibility probability okay so so you're so it's saying beyond data right so okay so you're saying that we might think that there are these thefts that are occurring that are randomly occurring random uh, copper theft. We, we don't uh, no. random excuse me random if it is random we don't focus but you if it is know recurring it they create a pattern that is the focus of okay. the project. But there, but there are copper thefts that are ha happening, and and I meant by random is, is that they're infrequent. They happen over a period of time, but they don't happen frequently in that period of time. So if you have a copper wire theft in March, and then you don't have another copper wire theft until maybe September, then then you you may not be able to connect the two. So how would you know, and, and through your investigation, like you're saying, you go through several layers. The, the, you go from the port to yeah. you know, who's got the demand. So will you, will you be able to, uh, in other words, will you be able to, are you able to link this on the possibility that there might be an off-island demand in a bigger organization where these, Thieves in these other random, uh, these you know, these other infrequent uh, copper wire thefts could be connected, like it's part of a bigger operation. Uh, based of what I, the result that I went into, you can see the spike of in, in the increase of uh, copper wire. Then when there's a spike of sudden increase, so you become skeptical. Okay, so, so you, you investigate. That, okay, so, you, so it suggests to you that there might be something. Something. So you okay. investigate further. You go to the different uh, information. There are many questions that you have to ask in your mind. So you become skeptical. Skeptical. Meaning skeptical, say, yeah. If you're a crime analyst, one asset that you should have is to be skeptic. You must be skeptic. Well, we're all skeptical when it comes to theft yeah, on Guam. Because and, and copper wire uh, thievery is a very big deal. Yeah. When we come back, we'll take a quick break. But when we come back, uh, I, I do want to ask answer some of these the, the questions about the frequency of crimes and how you decide if it's part of or how do you n d eliminate the possibility that it might be a part of a bigger organization that might be running off the shores of Guam. Yeah. And then in that case, you might be pulling in uh, other uh, resources that would include maybe like the FBI or something. Well, we're talking to yeah. uh, Pops. He's yeah. everybody's pop. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> something to talk about, come on back. <laughs> copper wire thefts if they do you determine if they are related and can be linked to maybe a yeah outside outside if it is not outside it might be used here somebody who is installing aircon so you identify who needs this item welcome back again to something to talk about we're at king's restaurant again they have brought us the fruit pie you know um pops mm. the uh, most popular item among my guests is oh, the uh, the grapes so before you get you know leave you have to have a few of these grapes because yeah. they're different than any other mm. grapes that you would find in the entire world because they're from king's, king's. Okay? okay so all right, we'll have you investigate, investigate. that one. <laughs> have to investigate where it came from. Where it came from, that's yeah. exactly it. We, we're talking with uh, Pops Ruiz. He's the new crime analyst for the Guam Police Department. Um, and you you report directly to the chief, the Chief, chief Rodalio. Yes, okay. Um, we were talking about copper wire thefts and the yeah. frequency of them. And then the possibility, we might in the public think that they're taking these this copper wire to profit yeah, individually, I'm skeptical, wondering because of the frequency, and and the danger of the crime. Because there is a it's it's there's a, a an element yeah. of danger to people who are ripping off this this copper wire yeah. from a live power source. That the market is the demand is so, high, so high for it that somebody on the other end is paying top dollar for it. Yeah. So. Who were these people who are, it, it couldn't be the air, the average air conditioning guy, right? Yeah. It couldn't be 
uh, the average sca scrap yard because there's too many checks and balances. Uh, okay, or this is, is uh, or there might be listening, those who are involved in this. The, oh, so you can't talk them, about it. Yeah, no, the, it oh. might be a, a junkyard, but he's using another establishment. It's a front for something else. Yes, he, he might not be buying it, but he's, he has another business name who is uh, trying to finance the... the so he, so he the buys a scrapyard with, with financial backing from a larger entity, which may not actually be operating from, obviously not operating on Guam. No, meaning to say this is a leg, legitimate junkyard, but he's not buying copper wire. Yes, another, these are possibilities. I'm not telling this Okay, man. okay. And this, he might have another establishment that is uh, discreetly buying this. Right. So when he ships it, he says to it that there are packages not to be, if it is shipping it outside, if it is a contractor using it for uh, installation or it is used for air conditioners, then there might be a big project inside the base or inside here. Uh, so we have to look on all different perspectives. What, have you been able to nail down anything so far? Have uh, you been able to, 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 to sum up what might be happening? Oh, uh, not yet because I was only hired September 21 this year. Oh, okay. So it was well, we probably don't want to tell everybody that you haven't really quite cracked that case. You're okay. really hot on somebody's trail. Watch out. Yeah. You're hot. But I have <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, it, it, well, I, I, think, I think that it's valuable information yeah. uh, because this is one of the most, this is a chronic yeah. crime. This is something, if we had a string of other serious crimes, uh, then, then you would be activated to, to, to do this, to, yeah. to investigate. But you're not always. Is, is are you? Is it just depends on if there's a spike in crime or a certain kind of crime yeah. that they call you. That or is it any? Yeah, I, I will just be waiting of what the informa data okay. that they need. They will. Pro I will process it. I will tell them. It's not only on copper wise or uh, type of burglary. There are also. Uh, information that is needed by the precinct so where they can uh, uh, re deploy their officers where there are many hot spots so it will be more effective and efficient instead okay. of random uh, patrolling yeah. where they don't know where they're going but so they, you could tell them specifically yeah. where these crimes are taking place yeah. aside from copper wire thefts what 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 are the other kinds of crimes that we really need to concentrate more police work on. Uh, based on what I've, uh, there are only two, tail problem and burglary, then next is uh, disturbance, but the, the disturbance, we have to open it up again. What are these kinds of disturbance? Yeah. Also family violence comes next, so. Does it always depend on how much of the resources that the police department is expending on fighting these crimes to determine how closely you investigate them? Uh, it's not the when you deploy your resources in the in the proper way by having information like for example hot hot spots I mentioned earlier if, if you can identify the hot spots meaning say these are patterns of crime committed the chief the precinct commander can now direct the patrol officers to conduct patrol here mm -hmm. for preventive. Uh, preventive actions okay. so instead of when they don't know the hot spots they keep on patrolling anyway wasting gasoline time so <laughs> okay, if well, you know if you, yeah, yeah. It's, it's logical just like in the private sector the the gro the like Kmart or other uh, kind of uh, uh, establishment that caters to customers they use the Oracle's Oracle software to study mm -hmm. the pattern buying patterns of customers so by studying their transactional data, they come up with uh, information or data that when men buy uh, pampers or diapers for their, their son or uh, daughter, oh, they they're also, single fathers. They're the single fathers. Ah. They buy also beer. So with that information, the owner of that grocery or uh, mart will now move the beer near the diapers. So it makes sense. So I mean, say you use the information for, uh, you need to be doing this for yourself. Instead of the police department, you should start your own business. Yeah, you, you I'm need, just kidding. You, know, you, need, you need data. <clears throat> well, I, I get, I get it. In, yeah. in the same way that uh, the Guam police or any organization oh, will, use, about that. will use data for deciding. Because in deciding, it's very important to have information with you. 
So it make when oh, you make things yeah. make sense of anything, so it will reduce cost. Yeah, but see, here was what I was thinking. I'm thinking you put the diapers next to the beer. Yeah. Then something's going to happen to that kid. I'm thinking a crime is going to be committed of some sort of neglect or something. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. But if you put the beer next to the baby, it's kind of like selling selling beer, you know, in places you shouldn't be selling beer. So they, anyway. they, they study the pattern. So the, this uh, establishment, oh. of course, the objective is profit. So they wanted right, to increase right, sales. Right, right, right. So they so, moved the beer section near the diaper so they okay, can... Okay, so then, okay, so then in, when you say that, then do you mean to say that if there's more family patterns. violence cases yeah, in that locale, then you can see why this is happening? Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's oh, always a pattern. I, didn't, I would never have thought about that. Well, that's why I'm not... Yeah, that's why I'm not when, a crime when analyst, crime but. keeps recurring, it yeah. creates a pattern, yeah. and that's when you, you correlate everything, you yeah. analyze, then you feed this to the... Operations uh, officer. Okay. So you office. were still on. You were still working for the police department during the time that there was a period where there was a lot of crime against women. Remember, there were w men were jumping women while they were trying to get in their cars. There was the Crown Bakery rape case. Y you, you remember these cases? Yes? Yeah. And I, I mean, women were being attacked as they were trying to get into their cars, or somehow or another. Did you? Were you just just from your? you know, position at the police department before you became a crime analyst. Did you look at that and, and understand what might have been a pattern or did you try to make sense of that? No, uh, my job as an admin assistant was to work on data. Mm -hmm. uh, I collect data, I tabulate it, then I give the, the reports. It's only for reporting, mm -hmm. uh, periodic reports. Okay, oh, so and, now you have and a trends, okay. And trends, trends only. The spike of domestic violence is, uh, is going associated up or with down. what? Is the spike in domestic violence is associated with what? Uh, with uh, usually conflicts, conflict between husband and wife, no, but is child there a abuse. Certain, but is there a certain period of time where you find, let me give you an example. You'll find a spike in burglaries, you'll find a spike in thefts, you might yeah. find a spike in uh, shoplifting during the holiday period. Uh, seasonal trend, that's what we call seasonal okay. trend. All right. So what, to what do you attribute a spike in family violence? When, when it, I mean, is that, or is that all year round? There's no real, you can't put a finger on any particular reason why that trend is, or it's a trending all year. Uh, I, I did not work on that. I just, uh, okay. yeah, I was just but, collecting. Yeah, nine, but, but from your, but, from but, your experience, yeah. from your experience, what would you say about the reason why so, there are so many family violence cases now? Uh, there are many reasons uh, because of, uh, it's a two way. Because the either the wife is always allows himself to be controlled, herself to be controlled. Mm -hmm. So it's good in Guam because there are many serv service providers where they can turn to. Right. If there are problems, we have advocates who, who calls on them or they call us with the hotline number and they can yeah. refer immediately to counseling. If a sexual assault, they are referred to Healing Hearts. Or Ali Shelter. Yeah. So there's a lot of services. Services, there are a lot of services. yeah. Okay, I need to ask you this other question. Yeah. You ready? Ready. Okay. W name me one of the biggest cases that you worked on in the Philippines. Uh, the, the biggest cases when I was assigned as intelligence in the northern part of Luzon is uh, to, to capture, of course, the head of the communist leader assigned in that area. But we are all supporting because in an area, there are what we call a regional intelligence meeting always, so we share information, so we're not working alone. Yeah, so, and, and so you worked on that case? Uh, uh, we were working on that case, so with that I, I, was, I got an experience of analyzing uh, their movements. Mm -hmm. First, you have an order of battle, identify the organization, their strength, number of firearms. Did that lead to their capture? Uh, based on reports coming from the agents right. in the field. It did lead to their capture? Yeah, especially okay. when the report, the movement is already, you see already movements, you, the sightings of different personalities, meaning say you come up with the, with the analysis or prediction, oh, that they will be holding a conference. Yeah. Or they will be attacking a detachment. Yeah. yeah. Well, I also sure. know, and I, I, I said I wasn't going to ask you, but I lied. Um, I, and, and you don't have to answer, but I, I will say that he uh, also worked on the assassination 
of President Benigno Aquino, Aquino, and he also worked in the investigation of the former and late President Marcos. And that's all I guess we could talk about as far as that. He's a crime analyst. I, we can't ask him too many questions, but we do appreciate that you've taken the time to come yes, here. Congratulations Thank on your you new mom. job. I'm going to call you. If somebody breaks in my house, I want you to analyze nice the situation. Hit. That's I what you call, call you en for that. environmental criminology. Okay. You look at the why, why the why, the, the, why the thief was able to be successful yeah. in burglarizing your house. So. You see this face? Yeah. Be be very worried if you're a criminal. That's him. Thank you. Good night. Thank you for joining us on something to talk about. <laughs> you oh. scared the criminals. So yeah, my yeah. face is not only used to scare rats, <laughs> they also scare nice criminals. Job. <laughs> that was very interesting. Thank yes, you very much.